Greetings residents of Peter Maritzburg and welcome to Msunduzi News Podcast. My name is Anele Makanya and I'll be your host. Today we are joined by the Senior Manager of Waste Management, uh, Mr. Wilson Mklongo, who is responsible for making sure that our beautiful city is kept clean as the capital city of KwaZulu-Natal. Mr. Mklongo, Sikbingelele Skwamgele Gum Sunduzi News Podcast. No, greetings uh, to yourself, uh, Ms. Anele, uh, and Saba Bingelele Aba Bugelebe. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Mklongo, uh, we've called you today so that you're just going to explain to the residents of Peter Maritzburg. You're just going to tell us who is Mr. Mklongo, um, what are you responsible for. We know that you are dealing with making sure that our city is clean, our communities are clean, and also there is management of the landfill site. Maybe if you can briefly tell Abatlali about yourself and the role that you are tasked to do in Umsunduzi municipality. No, no, thank you very much, uh, Anele. Well, uh, my name is Wilson Mlongo. Uh, I'm appointed by Msunduzi uh, around the year 2020 in April. Mm. Uh, I was appointed as a senior manager responsible for the management and handling of waste, both domestic business as well as the actual disposal uh, uh, of waste within the municipal jurisdiction. So basically, ours is to ensure uh, what is referred to as a duty of care Mm. Uh, both for the environment uh, as well as the well-being of human beings. Uh, Anneli, you'll remember that those are key uh, principles that are enshrined on the waste management strategy, but also the actual legislative framework that is governing the management of waste. Mm. So basically, we are not just responsible for the collection <laughs> of papers, yeah. but we are responsible for ensuring that there is functionality within these cities, and that can only be realized through the management or proper management practices of waste within the jurisdiction. Oh, okay. That is very great, uh, Mr. Mklongo. Maybe, as you say that you came in 2020, right? Yes. Yeah, you came in 2020, and I know there were headlines about Msunduzi municipality, the filthy city, um, the what what city. Can you tell us um, what have you done from the state where you came to Msunduzi municipality, and what has driven you to make sure that you bring change to the capital city? Because we know that the other people, they work because of passion, Others, they work because they are tasked to do that uh, work. Can you briefly tell us on that? Yeah, no, thanks, uh, 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 Ms. Makanya. Basically, I think one of the important things for us, mm. uh, looking at the situation which the actual uh, department was facing uh, in 2020, uh, we realized that probably we had to actually focus more on the back-to-basics okay. principle, you know, mm. Uh, getting basic general things like ensuring that the waste is collected on a weekly basis, the landfill is compliant, there is mm. no more fires. Mm. You know, the issue of the aesthetical appeal of our city, uh, Msunduzi being a capital city of KwaZulu-Natal, mm. um, this, this would have also seen us uh, to not just be managers, okay. but to be part of the city. Uh, against that, it would have seen us moving into Peter Marisbeck mm. to stay in Peter Marisbeck because I firmly believe that you cannot manage something that you do not, or that you cannot measure. Mm. So for you as a manager to measure the issues that we would have been facing in 2020, uh, it would have seen us uh, reciting in Pedama respect, it would have seen us participating in Pedama respect, so that we have an understanding mm. of what are we actually going to be managing. Mm. That is how we're able to then measure the issues and deficiencies that would have been seen. One basic one, was that we, as a city, we were still stuck on traditional waste management systems mm. instead of integrated waste management systems, which will also have an element of saying, how do we innovatively improve on such mm. services? You know, how do we add uh, a, 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 a additions or extend our services to areas mm. that have been previously disadvantaged or that have not yeah. been receiving such services? Mm. So I think the biggest thing for us has just been to ensure that we go back to basics Mm. ensuring that we comply with relevant legislative frameworks that mm. govern waste management within the city. Uh, I think part and parcel of that, we would have seen the three years that we've taken uh, as a municipality in ensuring that the landfill is no longer on. We don't, we don't experience any Section 30 incidents mm. like your fires, you know, the control of ensuring that 
for those uh, households that are supposed to receive a once a week service, mm. the service is provided on time. Where we cannot, I mean, some of the instances we've had to utilize communication a lot to communicate to mm. our people and say, we will not be able to make it today, we'll be back the following day. The following General day, issues yeah. are nearly that you will find in any municipality, mm. the issues of breakdowns of vehicles. Mm. You know, the issue of instilling discipline within the waste department was also part and parcel of probably the recipe mm. that we, we have used to try and shape this department. Mm. For us to be functional, we have to have disciplined staff. And you also touched on issues of passion. I think mm. in general, yeah, for any specialist, whether it be an engineer mm. or someone who's working for community, you have to be passionate in terms of what you do, you do yes, for you exactly. to succeed. Exactly. So I think also that means we are able to go the extra mile, which mm. is also something that we've also tried to inculcate in our in our department within mm. our staff to say we are doing a job that is critical because in any case you would remember when someone builds a house the last thing they think of is how they are going to manage their waste yeah. and the only time they think about that that is when the house is finished it's finished yeah yeah no in, in most cases you won't find a person saying no before i even build this is how my waste mm -hmm. is going to be managed mm -hmm. so we have to close that gap in terms of ensuring that we educate our public. Mm. And also, Jay, in my closing statement, in terms of this question, Anele, the responsibility to manage waste is not a municipal responsibility only. Mm. It is a responsibility between the municipality and the producer and the of the waste. Mm. It's like That's when right. we say the CPT is filthy or we say the CPT is dead. Mm. The, mm. the CPT is not filled. It's the user of the CPT that makes the CPT filled. To be filthy. Oh, I like that. You know why I say like that, Mr. Mshogo? It's because there are Facebook comments that I've recently read uh, where the municipality posted about the work that's being done in the city. Actually, it's the photos of, of tonight. So maybe if I can read a few. There is one resident who is saying... Thank you for your efforts. Children should be taught at home and in school from a young age not to litter. And the other one replies to say, adults are littering. At night, the city is cleaned. By 8 a.m., it's something else. So as you are saying that it's the users of the city that makes it uh, filthy. But how? what is the department doing to ensure? I know that we, people are saying educate people about managing waste or littering. But above that, what motivation can you give to the residents in terms of taking care of what they are using? No, I think that is very important, uh, uh, Ms. Makanya. In particular, um, you know, we as management within waste management, has, we've ensured that whatever operations that, 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 that has got to do with us cleaning the seat, mm. they also speak to the actual environment that we're operating in. Yeah. So, for instance, a CPD would have segments. You'd have an upper town, you'd have a central, mm. you'd have a downtown. You, you have to have an understanding of your peak hours. When do you uh, anticipate that waste will be at an increase in terms of littering? That is mm. when people are going home uh, and, you know, they start buying from the vendors. Mm. They, they, that is when people are coming into the city in the morning. Mm. Then, you know, that is where you... So you, we've got this a, a, a overlap of our shift system. Okay. We've got a shift that starts in the morning, finishes at around 4. Mm. We've got another shift that will start around 4, finishes late at night. Okay. This was just to respond to the actual scenario or the situation that we are facing in terms of how waste is generated, when are the peak periods of, of, mm. of collection and so forth. But I think that the biggest thing in terms of us ensuring that we are able to, to actually win this war on waste, because this is a war. Mm. The, the, the public, the business people that mm. we've got in our CPT, they need to start adopting the outside premises of their, of buildings. their buildings. You know, it, mm. it's, that's how it starts. So this enhances mm. these general operations that are scheduled. We've got scheduled operations. We know who's supposed to be where. Mm. We've got checklists. Mm. We're able to measure the performance. Mm. But against that, we also do take the criticism that you will normally find on our social pages. I, personally, mm. do a lot of scanning of such comments. Mm. Positive criticism, we take it. Negative mm. criticism, we also take it. Mm. We also do believe that it also builds us in terms of ensuring that we are able to improve and improve and improve more in terms of making sure that the CPT is kept clean. So I would believe, Mr. Mshongo, that the photos that the municipality post on their Facebook page, those photos are a type of a POE 
for the people who are cleaning the city? How have you done in order to make sure that um, all the responsible uh, supervisors or the responsible staff of that time is sending you pictures or there is evidence that the city has been cleaned? Yeah. You know, um, it's a good question, um, POE, portfolio of evidence. Mm. Um, Anele, we, are, we, we, we will keep on supplying these photos, not necessarily because then I would normally, I will quote some of the comments mm. that we would normally see on Facebook, like, why are you showing us something that you are supposed to be doing? Yes, yeah, every you know, day. Every yeah. day. Why? No, we, 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 we've got our fingers mm. on the pulse. Yeah. We, 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 we know exactly what is happening where. Mm. So, for instance, you would find comments that says you are only showing us Church Street. Uh, why are you street. not showing us East Street? Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we are always in East Street. We are, we are all mm. over, you know. Mm. We, we, we do show. Mm. Um, and we love the city. Mm. Part and parcel of us saying and showing or showcasing the works that are being done is because of the love, love that we have of yeah. our city. So, for us to, to wake up the next morning mm. with the same oomph, Mm. We have to constantly communicate to our public. I do know that communication or information dissemination mm. is strategic yeah. because you can't now have someone who will just go and post and say the CBD is filled mm. because mm. people do see our CBD. People yeah. that come to Peter Marisbeck mm. know how Peter Marisbeck is looking is. like. Yeah. And we are proud because we do have businesses mm. and well-affected stakeholders that are taking pride mm. into assisting the municipality into achieving this objective, which is cleanliness mm. and functionality of our city. Of the city. Tell us about the name and shame while you are on the business part, because I know that there are businesses who will just, let's say, um, I don't want to mention names of those businesses, but someone who will just take their waste and put it elsewhere, and then you, that person get caught by the, by the municipality. What measures do you take to make sure that that person accounts for what they are doing? Ms. Makanya, we, we, we are very fortunate as Msunduzi, and, 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 and I will say this is part and parcel of the strategy that fits into public safety as well. Mm. You know, it fits into the issues of safe city, okay. where we've got allocated officials doing monitoring on a daily basis, mm. but also peace officers that are enforcing waste management bylaws. Uh, there is enforcement that is taking place in the city. Mm. There are people that are getting fined, mm. you know, uh, uh, compliance notices issued. And we've also said, let's not just do it for the sake of finding. We have mm. even included this as part of our performance uh, system within mm. the department to say, at least in terms of the compliance and issuing of compliance notices and summons, we would want to say if we received 97 mm. uh, complaints, out of the 97, 50 were compliance notices or summons issued, mm. 40 were first offenders or second offenders or whether mm. they were fined and so forth. So we are able to even measure ourselves in terms of this enforcement. How mm. are we performing on enforcement? Mm. But all in all, one would not miss, take an opportunity or miss this opportunity to say residents really need to take pride in our city. Mm. Residents, you know, when you take out a bag, mm. you are not creating employment. When you are littering outside, you are driving a car, you are throwing a can, you are mm. not creating employment. Mm. But you are you 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 are you are you are creating a problem for the city for the city mm. by you know accumulation of waste littering mm. because remember clean cities will attract investment you know yes, hence I will keep yes. on making reference to functionality a functional city is a clean city mm. so a clean city attracts investment so with that you will find a lot of spin-offs mm. that will just assist us in growing as a city and especially being a capital city so I think. Uh, Ms. Makanya, it's just very strategic for us to ensure that we constantly communicate, we educate. You know, when they speak of uh, why are we, or we, we must take it to schools, mm. it is saying principals in Peter Marispec, teachers in Peter Marispec must constantly speak to the issues of waste to our children that are currently residing in these schools so that when they grow, they grow with this good mentality of a clean type of environment around them. So they would want to enforce it. And and slowly, this will cascade into generations. I mean, we are far better. Uh, three years ago, we were mm. not where we are now. But we mm. know that we are reaching the milestones. And for us to do that, we obviously means we must, inst we must uh, uh, sort of instill such strategies in ensuring that we are able to, to communicate with our public, tell them that these are the practices that are proper, and so forth. I must believe that there must be a problem with us as adults because uh, even the comments on Facebook, they're saying go to schools and educate, but there is that problem with us as adults because no one is saying educate the adults because obviously we should be taking uh, the responsibility to make sure that we don't litter, to make sure that we put it on the bin all the time. Yes. So Mr. Mklongo, maybe there's an, another issue that's about waste collection 
especially in residential areas. Um, they are areas that uh, waste is collected um, every day or according to your schedule, and there are places where waste is not collected at all. Can you tell us what are you doing to make sure that you assist uh, those areas where waste is not collected? No, I think it's also a very good question, uh, uh, mm. Ms. Makanya. You know, just recently we had the Auditor General. You know, we, we, we've got a regulated key performance indicator that is speaking to what service are we providing to who in numbers. When I say how many number of households, mm as we've got what's one to what 41. What, what's that are receiving a basic savings, mm. which is a once a week savings. We are currently sitting at 116,000 households. Okay. Those are people that are getting a once a week savings. How do we expand the savings to mm. areas which are not getting a savings, like OPP section, mm -hmm. I know yes, there are portions yes. of RTP houses mm. that are not getting a savings. This indicator is informing how to expand. I mean, just recently we've procured a total of seven 20 cube bulk refuse collection containers. Mm. This is speaking directly to this expansion or extension type of a service that the municipality is engaging itself on, which is regulated, by the way, Ms. Makanya, which means someone monitors mm. these patterns of growth. What one has got bulk refuse collection containers? Never mm. used to have a service. What three bulk refuse collection containers? France, bulk refuse collection containers. As we speak, there's an addition to uh, uh, France, which is a 20 cube that is going there. Mm. So slowly, uh, in this five-year long term, Musunduzi would have realized a few additional words, and eventually mm. the target is that we provide a 100% savings. So it means wherever you are in Musunduzi, mm. we you should be having a savings, whether it be capsized, whether it be bulk, depending on, the, on whether you are indigent mm. or you are a customer that can afford. Because also, we, we, we have to segment between those that are businesses, non-households, those mm. that are customers paying, and those that are indigent, because they also need to be provided with the savings. Mm. So hence, this regulator then says there is no way mm. that the Musunduzi cannot grow its base because there mm. is an indicator that is regulated that will always be there where we will be measured on whether we are expanding the service and providing a basic service. Oh, okay. Uh, good to hear that there is something that's happening uh, in those uh, areas where waste is not collected by the municipality. And also, uh, Mr. Pshoka, you want to say something? Yeah, <laughs> man, you, yeah, you, you sorry, you just that. take at it. You know, when, when, you, when, you, when, you, when, when we speak of this general service that is being provided and, you know, we're speaking to mm. an expansion, I, I cannot not say that. Uh, you know, we've, we, we're looking at a lot of avenues, you know, some mm. are looking at issues of triple P's mm. in terms of co-ops, you know, types yeah. of initiatives of that nature into saying, how do we speedily get these services provided to our communities? Mm. And, and I think the municipality is very clear in terms of where we want to be as mm. a municipality when it comes to such services. So, yes, I just wanted to add that, that you know, we are not just coining ourselves uh, into this internal service provision, but we're looking at a lot of avenues now, yeah. that will actually see us speedily mm. providing these services to our communities. To the residents. Oh, that's that's amazing, Mr. Mslongo. There is also another issue of the landfill sites um, where people cannot access the landfill sites because of the prices, which uh, they believe that that is why we have so many illegal dumpings. Can you tell us about that? We saw that yeah. there is war on illegal yeah. dumpings and the municipality keeps cleaning these illegal dumping sites. And um, I believe it's a uh, use of revenue as well to make sure that you keep, there is one place that I know every time they go in northern areas, every time they, they, there's waste, the municipality will go and clean that illegal dumping site. Can you tell us about the illegal dumping? Yeah, illegal dumping, you know, um, one, I'll just touch on what you've just said, that I am dumping because mm. the landfill site, it's the prices expensive. are expensive. Yeah. Dumping is a crime. So how do you justify doing a crime? Mm. You can't justify that. The municipality, as part of its expansion, addresses the issue of a basic service for purposes of ensuring that there is a reduction in illegal dumping caused by communal sites because people are not getting a service. Mm. Hence the investment on infrastructure that is being bought or procured for purposes of expanding the service. Mm. But we can't say someone who's getting a basic service leaves their house with a plastic bag, comes and dumps it in the CPT and leaves it. They, they, you know, you, you can't justify mm. uh, doing mm. a crime yeah, because we've yeah, got bylaws and true. if you are caught, you can be even prosecuted for mm. it. But the illegal dumping is, is being addressed. We've got a unit that deals specially with illegal dumping, complaints coming through, mm. the issue of finding, the issue of cleaning those sites, the issue of rehabilitating. Just recently, the municipality has engaged through DFFE, mm. a program on extended public works, 
part and parcel of that program is addressing the issues of illegal dumping, not just by cleaning, mm -hmm. but we clean and rehabilitate the site by planting indigenous trees and cleaning up this spot so that at least we can provide an aesthetically pleasing uh, jurisdiction. But we cannot run away from the fact that for areas where service is not provided, we obviously have to constantly go there to go and clean up these communal sites that are caused by people that are not receiving service, which is being addressed through what we've just been speaking to, to say how do we expand the services to areas that are currently not receiving a service. Maybe one must actually do an emphasis mm. on the fact that illegal dumping is a problem not just for Msundus, but mm. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a South African problem, problem yeah. that needs to be addressed one way or another. Mm. And the only thing we can do is to enforce, enforce, and enforce. Mm. Whilst we address the issues of gaps when it comes to service levels that mm. we are providing to our communities. Thank you so much, Mr. Mshongo. Uh, maybe do you, on your last words, do you have any projects that are upcoming from the department? Uh, what are you doing to make sure that because I can safely say the city is looking pretty now. Yeah. The city is beautiful. So Ndusi municipality actually is a beautiful city. Yeah. So what can you say to the residents of Msunduzi in closing? What should they expect from the department? And I know there are other treatments that um, uh, are, are from the the, the 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 staff to the residents and from the residents to the staff what can you say uh, in that in making sure that we keep the city to it best yeah. well we 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 we've, we really have got a lot to do on our side as uh, waste management particularly the management of waste mm. uh, innovatively we must come up with new ideas you know the mm keeps on making reference to a strategy mm. you know as much as we've kept on saying we've, we 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 rely a lot on the national waste management strategy but in Umsunduzi, we need to have our own strategy that is going to deal with how we, fo how we manage waste even going into the future. Now, innovatively, that can only mean new technologies mm. being put in, like ensuring that we, we build up on minimizing of waste, your two-pack system, mm. separate your waste at source and recycling. But one of the projects which I think is going to be very much of a flagship project, which we've just submitted a proposal last week to mm. MISA, this one is speaking to the green waste, the garden refuse, where we are saying out of the seven garden sites, I do not want to now take that waste and continue disposing it at the landfill mm. because in any case, it's depleting our available airspace. Mm. We want to actually start a composting project. We have submitted a proposal. Hopefully, we will get funding. So it means the resident takes their garden refuse, dumps it at the, at the garden site. Mm. We generate a compost and we sell those bags. We do wholesales and we do uh, small sales that would be relevantly uh, closer to residential type of setups. And by that, we would have fed into the circular economy mm. of recycling. But also the cost benefits as associated with that will be enormous because it means we would be generating revenue out of a, a out of someone's waste, mm. which we now would have turned it into a resource. Mm. But uh, as I did mention, the main, main thing was to go back to basics, get the basics right. Mm. Then you can start looking at innovative ways of providing of services. Providing services. Yes. Th thank you so much, Mr. Mshongo. Maybe uh, while you are on the garden waste part, there is a resident who commented why, when the municipality was advertising the, ga the seven garden sites that you are speaking of, saying that why we do not have one in Greater Etendals. Maybe when you look to more projects, can you provide for those uh, residents too? Because they also have a in or they also have garden waste that they need to dispose. So this shows that this resident want to do the correct thing, but they do not know where. So maybe if the municipality can provide for that. Thank you so much, residents of Umsunduzi Municipality. We are in closing of our um, Sunduzi News Podcast. We are going to bring Umisi Mklongo Ngesi Futi Azo Kulumanani. There is a lot that is happening in the city, but do make sure that you keep the city clean, you stop littering, you bin it, uh, you make sure together we can. Thank you.